The officials John Clockerty from Raleigh North Carolina his eighth final four Jim Burr from Albany New York his sixth final four Ted Valentine of Orion Ohio his third Andre Patillo is the standby and the final four is underway in Carolina with the first possession. Jordan on Williams. Williams gets it back out. Reese into Montrose. They passed up a couple of shooting opportunities already. Patience. Oh, look at it. Montrose. Wow, what a strong move, Billy. Going right inside. Actually hit Paulie a little bit with the elbow. Got by with it. But there's a case. Low on the blocks. He is just so strong. Paulie stuck for a moment. Now finds Darren Hancock. Walters blows by Williams. Nice help by Lynch that time to slow him up. Three-pointer by Adonis Jordan. Shooting 45% from the floor on regular shots. And Reese beats him down the floor. <laughs> North Carolina on a trans transition bucket. And that's what this team will do. Both teams tight man to man. They play a little bit different on defense. So North Carolina forces you to the go ahead onto the baseline. Kansas plays a little bit more traditionally. Giving Hancock the outside shot. Walters set up for a three-point shot. Rebound is off of Kansas. North Carolina controls. Here's what I was talking about. Matras gave that little shoulder. You can see the bump in there. Paulie, no chance whatsoever that close to the basket against Eric Montross. 4-3 Tar Heels. Oh, good backdoor cut. Reese slammed on. And that is something, of course, that Kansas likes to do. We talk about the mirror image of the way these two coaches teach. North Carolina picking up a little early. Jordan doubled up. Now there's a reason for that. Nice lead. Almost stolen away, and they get it across in eight seconds. Walters from the baseline, rejected. Carolina basketball. Jim, what North Carolina is doing with that full court pressure is not trying to steal the ball. What they're trying to do is to force Kansas to take as much time as possible getting it over half court so they have less time to run that, that very intricate offense that they have. And they almost stole it that time anyway. Yep. I can't get over how much bigger Montross is than Paulie and is, for that matter, how much bigger Lynch is than Scott. You know, listing of heights sometimes a lot different in various programs. Stolen as Reese tried to bang it off a Kansas player. Hancock, a great defensive player against the dribbler. Walters missed his first from out here, but not the second. Second time today, although Walters did miss the first one that Williams has gotten caught inside. He really has to stay with him. Here's Williams at the other end. His three off the mark. Good blocking out by Kansas. Hancock almost out of bounds. Breaks out of the pack in Kansas on the run. Stolen by Montrose. He denied it inside to Scott. Kind of unusual to see Jordan throw that one away. He slaps his hands. Of course, had a great Final Four two years ago, which he played so well. Remember those outstanding matchup he had with Bobby Hurley. He's a three-year starter, is Jordan. Montrose. Oh, that's a putback. Almost back. tipped in, and we'll give the credit to George Lynch. And there we talked about the two guys on the blocks, Lynch and Montrose, so strong down in there. That was really crashing the boards on that one. Williams trying to stay with Rex Walters. Hancock will not take that shot. Oh. Scott, too strong. Here comes North Carolina. Not blocked, but altered that time. Scott may have a hard time against Montrose. Let him a little bit too much. Turned it over. Can we talk about offensive rebounding. Lynch goes up, keeps it alive, but almost rolls in, and that's what makes him so great, Jim, is not the first jump, but his second jump for rebounds. He's so quick off the floor. Patrick Ritchie in for Kansas, number 12, along with Calvin Rayford, number 10. There's Calvin, or Kevin Salvadori for North Carolina, along with Pat Sullivan, number three, Henrik Rodel, number five. Not unusual for Roy Williams to go to 50-plus substitutions in the course of a game. His best sub is also in now. Steve Woodbury, number 20 for Kansas. Sub that averages about 25 minutes a game and made second team all Big 8. That ought to tell you something. Carolina swarmed them, stole it. Now Jim, this is a huge team on the floor right now for North Carolina. Rodel at 6'8", playing guard. You have two seven-footers down inside. Montrose, again, they just went right over the top of Pauly. Well, Rich by Phelps. Yeah, Richie and Pauly will really have a hard time because they don't have the weight, and they're giving up about three inches 
to both of their men they're playing. Right off the foot of Darren Hancock. And a break in the action. North Carolina pounding it inside with Montrose. And out in front early, 10-6. The Tar Heels path to New Orleans, the Rhode Island win, the largest second round victory in NCAA history. And against Cincinnati, from 15 down, they won that game. All 10 points for the Tar Heels inside. Kansas is six on a pair of three pointers. Well, Jim, one of the things that Kansas has to recognize right away is that they are overmatched inside. Now they bring in Ostertag, who's got pretty good size on Montrose, but they're seven footer to seven footer. And the seven footer, Salvadori. Correct. So what you've got to do if you're Kansas right away is to say we've got to balance this inside power with some outside three-pointers. That is the only way offensively they can go ahead and make the split. Calling a push-off, I believe, against Ostertag. Well, and now maybe it's on Hancock. Well, Hancock ended up on the floor, and, and the, the referee pointed in the opposite direction. Pointed as though it was going against uh, Kansas, right. but it's going against Carolina. You see it. There was the screen. Now Hancock set the screen, Montrose ran right on through it. So Montrose gets the call, his first. Now they've got the three perimeter shooters, Walters, Jordan, and Woodbury in the game. Let's see if they can surround this size and hit something from the outside. Kansas's road to New Orleans as Richard Scott comes back in, the starter. Ball State, BYU, which was not easy. Cal and then Indiana, the one seed in the Midwest. But they have beaten three straight number one seeds in tournament play when you date back to 91, when they beat Arkansas and then Carolina at the Final Four. They're playing a one seed again today is Kansas. Jim, six straight times they got to a regional final. They've made it to the Final Four, so they've been tough in that area. Double O, Ostertag draws a foul against North Carolina as Derek Phelps. Oster Tag has, some in, has had some injury problems. You know, they say Paul Billy Heaston. Yeah. yeah, do you believe that with uh, Wilt Chamberlain? Well, I would love to see uh, Wilt matched up again. You know, a great interview I, I, I watched on uh, Roy Firestone's show with Wilt, who was, uh, was very interesting the other day. He talked about that 57 game when the two teams went against each other, and he said, you know, a lot of people forget that in 57, we were the second-ranked team in the nation, and North Carolina was number one. We finished second. And maybe that was the beginning of people talking about Wilt can't win the championship, which was, I think, uh, great insight on his part on that interview. Wilt's career at Kansas lasted 48 games. It seems like it must have been so much longer. Right. Only 48 games in a Kansas uniform. Wilt Lynch. Oh, great block by Ostertag. There's oh, Lynch. Lynch pounded by Woodbury. And there's a case where I talked about it's the second rebound that makes Lynch so tough. It goes up, Ostertag gets it on the way up, perfectly timed, but watch George Lynch. You better block him out because he's coming for that second rebound. Reese returns for Sullivan. So Woodbury's first, Carolina inbounds to Reese. Not exactly the play they used against Cincinnati. Nice hustle. Rowell with his size can look down inside and hit pretty well too. Reese drives past Walters, sets up Salvador on the other left side. Hand. Yeah, left-handed hook drops. Four points off the bench for Kevin Salvadori. There's a man that sat out as a rookie to go ahead and get his body strength a little better and really develop that nice inside hook with either the right or the left hand. Kansas six minutes into this game still without a two-point field goal, a pair of threes, and two free throws. Nice screen and release by Ostertag, and there's the double team on North Carolina. The big man's free, but they can't get him the ball. They should have lobbed right on over Phelps' head. Walters in the lane. Nice. Up high, he went with it. Nice adjustment. Beautiful drive. Ostertag was open. He didn't make himself available by raising the hands. He actually made himself small instead of going looking for the lob. North Carolina getting about what they want inside so far, Jim. Salvatore with some good hands to save it. Lynch on the box. And, oh, I thought they had a block from behind at Roy Williams in Kansas, but Woodbury instead will be slapped with his second. They have adjusted this year. You notice at the top of your screen, 
the giant video screen is turned off during free throws, but once the free throw is shot, the replay or the uh, full screen returns. Well, Jimmy, remember back your alma mater, Houston. The first time the Final Four was played here really had problems shooting from the perimeter. I think a lot of it was due to the, that signage that at, really at a 45 degree angle can be a problem. That was a, a 82 against North Carolina right. and Carolina raced out to a 14 nothing lead. Houston had one of the top scorers in the country Rob Williams and he was 0 for 8 in that game from the floor. Now you're noticing at top of the screen completely dark. And now the picture returns. It was not that way in 82, nor was it that way in 87, the Final Four at the Superdome. Thought it was too much of a distraction for the free throw shooter, so the NCAA adjusted. There's that trapping of North Carolina, and again, Kansas not able to get the ball out of the trap down inside. The best team I've seen work against North Carolina's traps this year was East Carolina. They got low and got through the trap. Jordan bangs one from 15, and it's 14 to 12 North Carolina Greg Gurley by the way is into the Kansas lineup number 33 there's that cross court passing which really opens up Montross on the inside nice job that time by Pauly on the inside he blocked it but out to Williams and a pure three all the way Billy we can see it from our angle Jim he has made half of North Carolina's three point shots and it's taken about a third of the whole team's output. That goes against Scott inside. Williams drew it. Got the three to go at one end and then Williams draws the foul on Scott at the other. Woodbury back. Walters back. Rayford in for Kansas. Well Donna Williams has improved himself greatly on the defensive end of the court and I think that that is a thing that's changed everything for him getting into the starting lineup. The fact that he's become a total player instead of a player that basically was a shooter only. Rodel with a significant height advantage against Calvin Rayford. Over the top to Montross. Hawley again blocked it, but they say a foul inside. But Jim, what makes that so successful is the fact that Rodel at six foot eight has a real good look here. You can see he throws right over the top of the head of the defender. So he has a good look inside. He gives Montross an opportunity to get the great position. And there you see Rayford is, has no factor whatsoever on that pass. They called it on Pauly as it looked like a pretty clean swipe. But it's two against Pauly now. And Jim, talking about Eric Montross, he's on quite a roll. In 12 games in NCAA tournament play, he's shooting 67%. Only Bill Walton at 68-6, and Stevie Thompson and Brad Doherty are ahead of him, so he's moving up there in the ranks. Had big numbers last year, too, big yep. averages. I want to correct that. Now, it's only one so far on Pauly, four on Kansas. You see that they don't have to guard Rayford on the outside like they do Jordan. Walters standing still, three-pointer drops. But why would you let Rex Walters alone? Eight for Rex Walters. Rayford looking to pick off a dribble by Rodel. Is that touch passing by North Carolina? Turn around by Lynch. Well, that's a Montross. Push maybe over the back. And indeed, now for Montross, that's his second. And he Third team foul against North Carolina. And we're under 12 minutes to go in the first half. That means a break in the action. Tar Heels by four. Jim, sometimes the strength is, is a negative. Here's the case where Montross is just pushes Pauly, who normally, if he had that strength, wouldn't have moved at all. A cheap foul for Montross, picks up the second, and that could cause real problems for North Carolina. Got a lot of, lot of time to go here in the first half. His third foul would sit him down for the rest of the time. I'm almost surprised that Dean Smith has let him in on this occasion with the lead. A lead of four, 19 to 15. And he's playing on Scott right now. Richard Scott ought to get the, somehow get the ball in his hands and make a one-on-one -on -one move in the low post. Make Montross guard him. Patience of Kansas. Oh, here he comes. Good move by Kansas. Scott. And there's the foul, but it's not on Montross. Rodel riding the back of Richard Scott. I think if Dean Smith looks at what they're going to do right there, He's got to think seriously about taking Montross out because they're going to go to him down low and Scott be tough for him to handle. Phelps in for Rodel. Rodel, a German, first time he ever saw an American coach was at a clinic.
Back home in Germany, and the clinic was performed by Roy Williams, North Carolina assistant. And there's a turnaround plus a foul. Pauly scoring the first points for the starting front court of Kansas. And he can add one. Excellent turnaround jump shot. What happened here, there was a switch, and Eric Montross had to go outside to guard someone, and that left Pauly and a smaller man inside. Pauly gets the three-point play and brings Kansas within one. Patrick Ritchie brings good size in off the bench. Can play outside. 6'8 junior from Lee's Summit. In for Richard Scott. From Kansas shooting very well. Here's the first time we've seen a full court pressure. 1-2-1-1. One, one, one. So the second missing Lynch off Lynch. Patrick Ritchie in defending also, but off Lynch. North Carolina handled that press very well, but you've got to finish when you get that kind of an easy basket around the hoop. And here we have Montross now matched up with Paul. Better deal for North Carolina. Stolen by Phelps, and he bounces it right off Pauly. A lot of thinking right there in just a millisecond. And he gets the turnover. Jim, that's the one big difference I see between Kansas and North Carolina's defensive concept. North Carolina forces you to the baseline. They let you have it, and then they get great weak side help. There's the lob again. Walters came over to help out, and he jumped right over and on to Montross. Now, Jim, if Walters is really thinking here, what would have been the play is to try to draw the charge on Montross, not try to steal the ball. I mean, he's no match for him up there that high. The key thing for Kansas, try to get Montross on that bench with three. Nice screening inside. Again, they feed Montross. Pretty good D. Molly tips it out to Lynch, leans in and gets it to go. George Lynch, the second all-time rebounder at North Carolina, trailing only Sam Perkins. It's incredible what George Lynch did. He was the MVP of the Eastern Regional as well. Woodbury gets it back. So nice. tough. Steve Woodbury, a sub and second team all-conference in the Big Eight. Jimmy, you talked about Lynch. Only Leitner in the ACC had 1,500 points, 1,000 rebounds, 200 assists and 200 steals, so that's the quality that young man has. Short on the turnaround this time. Chance to go ahead for the first time, huh? 21-20 Tar Heels. Kansas led early 3-2, and a charge drawn by Sullivan what against Kansas. And what happened here is Woodbury got frustrated. Sullivan actually hits him on the arm and fouls him. It's not called. You can see it right there. So Woodbury retaliates and pops him, and he gets the second call. That is number three on Woodbury, and that's a big early development. And, Jim, that was a mental frustration foul, not a physical foul, and those are the kind really hurt you. Lynch out for the Carolina Tar Heels. Salvador is back in. He went back with the two seven-footers. Nice, nice double team by Kansas. Williams. Oh, wow, off the glass. The Oster tag running up the floor for Kansas. He's just returned. Now it's Richie and Oster tag going up against Salvadori and Matras. Phelps really staying with Rex Walters on the perimeter. You notice Reese not giving up when he has Jordan. He didn't help out on any switch there. You just don't want him to get free for a three. Tipped high, and Hancock saves it for the Jayhawks. Nice dish. Beautiful pass. Hancock misses the short one off Kansas. I think Hancock was anticipating Montross going up for the block. Montross with the two fouls very wisely stayed away from him. Alvin Rayford, the smallest player ever to wear a Kansas uniform. He talked about Ostertag being the biggest at 7'2". Rayford only 5'6". Had a big steal and a hoop against Indiana in the so Midwest. That huge play. Made two great plays there with a penetration and dish to the outside in that game as well. And made a huge three against Indiana in our first game of the year in which Kansas beat Indiana regular season. Montrose with the putback. Carolina takes a five-point lead. 
Eight for Montross. There's Ostertag and Montross on the inside. Last touch by Walters. Last touch by Walters. So it's North Carolina basketball. There's actually a great pass by a bad shot. The ball hit the rim short and low and turned out to be the perfect feed. Montross with the inside position really did a good job with concentration there to keep his eye on it. There's George Lynch. And Adonis Jordan. Well, boy, Dean Smith dodged the bullet there with that many minutes that Montrose played without picking up another foul and played very effectively. Gets uh, Montrose a chance for an extra rest. At the next whistle, we'll have uh, one of the television timeouts that occurs under 16, 12, 8, and 4 in each half. So they bring Montrose out at 8, 10. Give him a little cushion of time. Little Adonis Jordan battling for the rebound. And it's off North Carolina. There is that whistle giving us the break in the action with North Carolina leading by five, 20 points in the inside. Back at the Superdome, you never know who you're going to see at a Final Four. Actor Nick Nolte, who was a football coach in Prince of Tides, is now making a movie as a basketball coach. Welcome, Nick. Uh, what's the movie about? And you studied with Bob Knight? Yes, I was with Bobby Knight for 10 days um, about a month ago, and I'm, I'm here with Pete Newell now today and uh, he, you know I'm just sitting with Pete and he's going through the game with me and all, all that kind of thing. Well if you have Pete Newell and Red Auerbach and Shaquille O'Neal you should never lose a game as a coach. <laughs> we have Bob Cousy too and Larry Bird. Uh, I don't know Bobby Knight Bobby Knight said he's going to play me pretty tough. Tell you about the media. And no I'm talking about he's going to come in and bring his uh, seniors in and uh, play my team. Great. So Good. We'll see how it goes. Good luck. On. Back to you, Jim. All right, Leslie. He should have been here on New Year's Day as Gurley misses the three. On New Year's Day, Alabama won the national championship here at the Superdome. Then he could have truly been the Prince of Tide or Tides. A roll. As they rolled that night, right? And look at this one. On a roll for the moment, George Lynch. Six points for the Tar Heels forward. Seven-point lead for Carolina. Jimmy expected that to happen. North Carolina came out and showed zone on that last possession just for one time. Then they go back to man. Hancock gives it up to Ostertag. Tipped up twice, three times, and out to Donald Williams. And without real size in there, George Lynch again, showing what that second leap is all about. Lynch, good, good move right in midair to get the bucket. Now George Lynch is a lot stronger than he looks, Jim. He goes inside, he can make those double pump fakes and still keep it up there, even if he receives some body blows from traffic on defense. Jordan. Oh. Over the back. Hancock, no call against Hancock. North Carolina has its largest lead of the game, plus possession. Plus, they're getting to rest Montross and not pick up that third foul. Six minutes remaining in the first half. North Carolina by nine. Thought the half hook was coming by Salvadori. Yeah, he, he thought about yeah, it. Couldn't get his balance. Lynch Wisely threw it out. Blocked this time, but right back to him. Oh, look at Reese get up on the inside. Reese hacked on the way up. Oster tag. Oster tags first. Carolina shooting 50% from the field. But look at the difference inside. Points in the paint. 22 to 4. Jim, excellent job by Reese that time. He and Lynch really picked up the slack with Montross out of there. Of course, uh, Reese and Eric Montross started off this run in the ACC tournament where they were late for a team meal. Didn't start those games because that's one of Dean Smith's procedures, the same as it is for Roy Williams. You don't get on time and you lose time. That happened with Bill Chamberlain years back. 72 at the final four. Reese misses the first. And Dante Calabria comes in. Freshman from Beaver Falls, Pennsylvania. Reese, as everyone knows, missed the jam at the end of regulation against Cincinnati. Lynch told him just jokingly, you have five minutes now to make up for this. But Dean tried to reassure him that the shot would not have counted, although it would have. That's what we have been told, but I've watched it on tape a number of times, and I still don't see how. The longest eight-tenths of a second in history. 
Pat Sullivan in for North Carolina. Ten point lead. Double digits for the first time. It was a Dempsey Tunney long count. Would you say that's what that was? Yeah. You know, Richard Scott has not gotten untracked, and I really think he's a key for Kansas to get something going inside. Walters. Soft touch in front of the rim, back of the rim twice, and through. Two-time Big 8 first-teamer. He's got the great perimeter jump shot, and then, of course, he's got that mid-range jumper as well. Good steal. Montross had it taken away. He wanted a foul called on Scott. Again, Kansas trying to steal that ball in that lob. I think they should get underneath him and try to draw that foul. Sean Pearson in for the first time. What a big misfire, but Kansas controls. Eric Montross really lost his composure there because of that call. Ryan Reese just got a quick blow, but back in for Dante Calabria. Pauly bounce pass to Scott. And Scott will shoot two free throws. Jim, he is the answer inside for Kansas, and he's got to get something started down there. At the conclusion of every NCAA tournament game, we will select the Chevrolet players of the game. In conjunction with the award, Chevrolet donates $1,000 to the general scholarship fund of both schools. Henrik Rodel charged with his second. He goes out of the lineup. Sullivan right back in. That's the sixth foul against North Carolina. Richard Scott at the line. He one time worked for Bill Clinton. He's from Little Rock, Arkansas. And back when Scott was in high school, Clinton was working to get reelected as governor of Arkansas. Scott spent a summer helping pass out pamphlets here's around a young, the capital city of the state of Arkansas. Jim, here's a young man shot 39% from the foul line and really improved that in 93 all the way up to 48%. Montross almost picked up one. This whole Kansas team, in fact, back in 91, remember, was a poor free throw shooting team. They're 80% though this year in the tournament. Right. Greatly improved. What's interesting is the two worst years in Kansas history from a win-loss percentage are the two best years they ever had as a team shooting free throws. So maybe there's something in that. Williams with his second three of the game. Rex Walters looks up at the replay of that, knowing that he has to stay out there with Williams. Walters with the three at the other Ooh, end. Downtown. That's his third. The only problem on that shot, Rex almost stepped out of bounds on the catch. I thought, very close. Yeah, I thought when he received the pass, he was on the line, but no call. Tipped by Scott, out of bounds to, tar to North Carolina Tar Heels. Lynch back in, Salvatore. Hancock for Kansas. There have been already 35 subs in this game. Make that 36. Patrick Ritchie in. And Jim, the, the key sub normally to really give them a lift, Woodbury for Kansas is on the bench with three fouls, so that's one sub Roy Williams will not be able to make the rest of this half that he'd love to have. Picked up his third at the 9.39 mark here in the first half. That reverse dribble by Lynch, he was looking for the backdoor cut by Williams, and he wasn't there. Got the floater to go, though. 10 for Lynch. Derek Phelps staying right with Jordan. Did the great job in the second half against Nick Van Exel, who had really burned North Carolina and put Cincinnati in the lead in the first half last week. Pauley wants to try it. Tipped in from the other side by Hancock. Hancock. Wearing those goggles because in a game against Colorado, he suffered retina damage in each eye on two different plays. One with an elbow, and one time he was hit in the face with a basketball. Ryan Reese posting up on Hancock. Draws the foul. Oh, they call for walking. Traveling. Nice job by Hancock defensively because Reese had great position on the pass. They head to the benches. Three minutes left in the half. North Carolina by six. Yep. And I would say that that had to be the best three games in a row that any team played in college basketball this year. Played, Nebraska. Yeah, Nebraska North was Carolina ranked at that time. Right. And here North Carolina for the second time shows zone. 
1-3-1, Lynch the chaser underneath, does a great job in the back line of that zone. Gurley gets the three. And there are those bench points that Kansas does so well. They have dropped a 10-point deficit to three. Step and Lynch, out. yep, on the end line. George Lynch saying Hancock's using his hands on defense. But a lot of times you see right here, he is on the line, tried to turn that toe, and it just didn't work for him. And again, Hancock doing a superb job against the dribbler defensively. Now here's the box that Kansas sets up so well. They're moving offense. Scott tries to get the back door cut. He's got the right man on him now. Williams on a switch, but he can't get the ball. That is not where you want to go against North Carolina. And tried to throw it off the leg of Lynch and out of bounds, but ahead to Sullivan. Oh, good save, though, by Hancock on the hustle down floor. And Jim, a small man who takes the ball to the baseline against North Carolina with a dribble is going to be in serious trouble. Jordan is smarter than that. Wants to stay out of there. Keep the ball the center of the court. If you go down low on the baseline, get rid of it in a hurry. Donald Williams. Oh, what a follow through and got hit on the shot. The follow through was so pure. 11 for Williams. He's hit three threes from the same vicinity. See, North Carolina just wanted to show that zone for a little bit. Nice pa entry pass that time. Pauly doing a good job of positioning right. with Salvadori behind him. He sealed him down in low on the blocks with Montross out. Dean Smith probably wants to keep him there now. Not only from a standpoint of rest, but he certainly doesn't want to pick up another foul with just a minute and 30 seconds to go. Good help by Jordan. Williams has to go all the way across the road. And Lynch turned his head. Wow. Jim, what, ha what North Carolina has on the floor right now is Williams, who will look to shoot, Lynch, who will look to shoot, but three fellas that really don't want to take the shot. Kansas did an excellent job recognizing that and playing tough on those two people and forced the other three to make a play that wasn't there. Patrick Ritchie comes back on the floor for the Jayhawks, who trail by four. Cross Get court pass. pass sets up Jordan. Sullivan, under a minute to play in the first half. There you see Roto wanting a little backdoor cut. Sullivan, no match for Hancock with the dribble. Hancock just too quick for him. Salvador. Oh. Hancock is having a great first half on defense, Jim. That help out that time just altered Salvadori's shot. Walters, Kansas could have waited for the last shot. And should have, Jim. Down four, you can get a better one than that. You don't want to put the ball back in North Carolina's hands with an opportunity to score and extend this lead. Derek Phelps, Brian Reese also in. You see what Dean Smith does? He substitutes back in to get an offensive team on the floor. And they'll hold it for the last shot here. Be smart for Jordan to go for it. And they do. They go for the trap right away. Nice move. Reese. Blocked by Richie. Salvadori, though, flips it home. And that's the right-handed half hook. He made a left-handed half hook early in the half. He has six points off the bench. Salvadori. Hancock goes. Yes, he beats that's the down. buzzer. What a... What a magical side of the floor at the buzzer at the Superdome. Not that it was a game-winning situation, but there you go again yeah. at the Superdome. He didn't call for it there, Jim. <laughs> He'll yes. it. Brings back, well, conjures up images of Keith Smart, Michael Jordan. That's but right. again, it wasn't Championship Monday, nor was it at the end of the game. But it's a two-point bucket that makes the difference four at halftime. The lead at one point was 10. At the end of the first half, the score, North Carolina 40, Kansas 36. CBS Sports exclusive coverage of the NCAA basketball tournament will continue after this message and a word from your local station. Kansas trails by four points. The Kansas assistants say they have got to put more pressure on Carolina's perimeter offense. 
so the ball doesn't go so easily into Montrose and Lynch. As for their own offense, they recognize the Carolina traps. What Kevin Stalling says, they've got to attack it quickly. Pass, pass, then shoot. As for Carolina, they're disappointed they let Kansas back in, especially Darren Hancock's basket at the end. They want to have a tough second half. Jim? Kansas will have it first in the second half. And almost a steal by Phelps. He thought he had bounced it off of Hancock. Derek Phelps, great anticipation as a defender, Jim. He moves those feet so well. His mind is really sharp as to anticipating the play. There he did it again. Almost picked one off and Paulie if the pass had taken place. Walters threw it off the glass. Phelps did not attempt the shot in the first half. Little touch. Paulie on a, on a push in the back, right? Against Pauley and for Pauley his second. Carolina has not lost this season when it led at halftime. Well, let's make the Kansas fans feel good. You know, since the seeding started 15 years ago, only two number one seeds have ever won a national championship. Carolina back in 82 and of course Duke. So there's always hope. That's Kansas really stepping out on their defense now. This should offer an opportunity to go down in low. There it is. Montrose. Oh, two players got a hand on it. Phelps pump oh, faking and tipped in by Reese. Jim, if you're going to play North Carolina that tight, that far from the basket, it really allows for the lobs to Montrose. Well, Hancock hit that jumper to beat the buzzer at the end of the first half, a la Keith Smart. He went to Garden City Community College, just like Keith Smart. Little difference, though. He was really a highly recruited player. Keith Smart was kind of like a secret until he got to Indiana. Rex Han Walters was 16. Hancock had originally committed to UNLV. He was the National Player of the Year in junior college. Smart was a fine. Again, Montrose turned around. Scott had position. It still belongs to North Carolina. How about that last trip where they well, knocked it out of his hand? Well, here you can see coming from the side, that was an excellent block that time. Let's give uh, Paulie a lot of credit. He just went up there in good shape, and you no don't see many people that can knock it out of Montrose's hands. They're really going down low to him now. Another block by Paul. Derek Phelps the ball in that tight, Jim. He's a pretty good finisher down inside 15 feet. There he is, posting up on Jordan. That's the play I'm talking about. He's tough in there. Montrose plus one. And how about that? Montrose, instead of the power move to the inside, which Paulie had to anticipate, shifted the ball back over to the side of his head. Watch this right here. He shifts it over. Paulie goes for what had been the normal shooting position. And therefore, he couldn't get it. See that little shift there? An excellent play by Montrose. And Paulie now has three. Well, Oster tags over on the bench, so Roy Williams is in decent shape over there, substitution wise. Comes back to Carolina. Walter's doing a better job staying with Williams in the second half. He got lost a couple times in the first half. Williams buried the jumper. I'm sure he's been told, stop trying to help out. Inside, outside. Muscling his way and left-handed, no less. Montrose. There's his father. Played at Michigan back in the 60s. Did Mr. Montrose. They had Scott. And of course, his grandfather, a two-time All-American at the University of Michigan. Jack Townsend. There he is. What made this was the unselfish play of the Carolina players who went inside, back out, and then back inside. When a big man knows that you return it back into him, he's happy to throw it back out, and that gives you a chance to get position on your defender. And Montrose buried him on his back. Pat Sullivan bounces off the bench for Reese. And here comes Rodel. Too late to check in. Oh, we'll go ahead and allow it for what Williams. I, what I think Dean Smith senses right here on this substitution, Jim, is that 
Walters did a good, has been doing a good job on Williams, so go back with Rodel, wear Walters out a little bit, and then come back with Williams on another defender. Montross running after him. Walters misses the three, and Sullivan bumps into Pauley. That's a subtle substitution situation for Dean Smith. But when you see a player doing a good job on a guy you're trying to get score, wear him down with another player that's not going to shoot. Walters eventually will have to come out, and I guarantee you when he comes out, you'll see Williams go back in. Woodbury with the three fouls in the first 10 minutes of this game. Now controlling for Kansas. Kansas needs double figures out of him, Jim, in the second half. Walters gives it up to Scott. Beautiful assist by Rex Walters. And caused by the switch. There's one right over the top. Lynch. And Scott hammered him. What caused this play is the fact that there's the switch. See, Lynch had to come out to get Walters. Phelps, who would normally be on him, didn't get there in time. Excellent recognition by Kansas. Okay, guys. That's the Two second on Richard Scott. Jimmy, Kansas is going to go ahead and make their move. They've got to make it offensively with either Scott or Woodbury starting to put some points up for them. Dean Smith told me George Lynch has the heart of a lion. And Billy, an amazing story about this young man from Roanoke, Virginia. He was born two months prematurely. They could hardly even get a pulse at birth. He was, in fact, at one time in the delivery room pronounced dead. They had filled out the birth certificate. Weighed three pounds at birth. Strong fellow now. One of the great leaders at North Carolina ever, says Dean Smith. And there's that zone defense with Lynch on the back line that has been so effective for them in this NCAA tournament. Jordan. Maybe not against a three-point shooting team that can surround you with Jordan and Walters. Jordan with eight. Sullivan fires it. Flat shot. Ball a quick outlet. Walters from the baseline. So tough to score from there. And there he goes and hits Montross. Forced the steal. Big man on the floor, Lynch on the floor, and now finally a foul. They call it on Lynch, but Walters set up that whole helter-skelter hey, sequence. Did, did you see who picked up Lynch? Roy Williams, and he said, nice job, good hustle. And live outside the Michigan Wolverines, there's James Bosco. Jim Leon Derricks, the freshman. Jim Michigan, Kentucky next. This morning, I was doing a clinic with kids here in town, and I asked them to pick who's their favorite team. And we've read all about this Michigan, you know, the good guy, bad guy, and about three-fourths of the kids there, and a couple of thousand kids I'm talking about, all rooted for Michigan. Surprise me. And they stay in the zone. Good bounce pass between the defenders. Scott. Uh, Dean Smith goes zone two times down the floor. Kansas attacks perfectly. And now they're just two down. Under 16 minutes to go in this game. Hook shot. Got it. Excellent hook shot. Let's see if Dean Smith stays with his defense. I think he's got to get out and go back to man. There he is. Back to man to man. Montross has 14. Solid screen by Scott. Off North Carolina. And a break in the play. The lead at halftime was four. It remains that point with 15.25 to go. 50 to 46. And there's one of the things we've often talked about throughout the course of this year. Here is a key player going out with a slight scratch. And this really hurts North Carolina right now because he's got to sit until, of course, they stop that bleeding. Williams picks up a quick foul. Now also arriving, Kentucky Wildcats. And of course, down in Charlotte, their bus was late, but their team wasn't when they got out, of, out there to play. They could have walked on water to the gym the way they played there. Steal by Phelps. Tough break for George sliding on the floor. Reese uses that little pump fake to try to get the defense to drive on out at him, and then he'll go by him with the dribble. 
still working on Montross on the side, Jim, and I'm sure Dean Smith wants him in there now. Rex Walters for Gurley. You know what really helped Kansas there? Two things. Montross's uh, slight injury gave Walters really a chance to get a lot of time on that bench when not much time went off the clock. So he got kind of like two timeouts there. So that puts him right back on Donald Williams. Good break for Roy Williams. Over the top of Paulie. Montross again, plus one. Great job that time by Montross, and here's where he's gained so much experience, Jim. A younger player may want to go ahead and put this shot up quickly before he gets his feet underneath him. Watch how Montross just relaxes, relaxes until there's a proper opportunity to go up and draw the foul. Third on Richard Scott. Great footwork here by Eric Montross. Reese on the follow. Jim, a replay of Michigan Temple, huh? Rebounding so well, the missed foul shots. Or Michigan, GW, George Washington, GW, right. right. Big difference at the end of that game. Yep. Woodbury, baseliner. Can't get Woodbury untracked. Rattled early with the three fouls. Boy, Walters really staying with Williams. Great defense. Top. Tough ball to catch. Yep. Montrose says, hey, it's my fault. My it was. Fault. It was a very tough ball to catch, though, because the backboard was causing some problems for Montrose. Sullivan in for Reese. And Ostertag. George Lynch and Ostertag were together over the summer in North Carolina. And a kid came up, a young boy came up, asked George Lynch for an autograph, and then he said to Ostertag, may I have yours too, Mr. Montross? <laughs> it was actually Greg Ostertag. You know, you can, you can see that. Boy, North Carolina packing it back in, the jump shot's available. Yes, sir. Pointer, the third of the game for Adonis. What Kansas did that time is they forced North Carolina's defense way down inside. Williams on the drive. They're looking for him to shoot the jumper. Puts it on the floor for the drive. Back to a seven-point advantage. 13. Oh boy! Oster tag hit Montross right in the face. Montross got went under the basket. Woodbury. Oster tag smacked Montross right in the face. And when Montross tried to regroup himself, Oster tag was wide open. You can watch these two down inside now, see if there's any retaliation. Traveling. And Billy, we have it for you. Watch this right here. Bam! That's the kind of thing that should put him out of the game. Montrose, while he was trying to regroup, as he goes back, he's lucky he didn't pick up a foul. That would have really been a costly one. Felt slipping a little bit, Jim. Of course, we know that he hurt his spine. And he, he seems to be in some pain right now. See if Adonis Jordan tries to take him with a dribble. Grimacing in pain is Derek Phelps. He's really limping, Jim. Grimacing all the way down on this defensive effort. Scott. They got Oster tag on this trip. Well, now that they score the basket, they should. Maybe his job is to go in there and pick up one on Montross. Here he is. Throwing him to the ground. There's two plays right there that could get him in a lot of trouble. And give Eric Montross some credit being the superior player for not losing his cool here. Phelps limps to the bench. This young man has had elbow problem, a spine problem, and now he hits the floor hard. Burr and Clockerty talking to Dean Smith about Richard Scott's basket and the push-off going on at the same time underneath. Contact lens of John Clockerty came out of his eye, Jim, and they're getting that fixed right now. John Clockerty, by the way, with his eighth Final Four appearance, has now set the all-time record. And Jim, you talk about officials working their way up. 
when John Clockety was at Wake Forest as a teacher, he started working the practice sessions where Jack McCluskey coached the team. And when he did that, he developed himself into official high school games, and now here he is, the ultimate. Became the referee that has refereed more Final Fours on the floor than any other. And he's having a real problem with that eye. Billy, they're going to, they've already put the points on the board. The basket does indeed count. 56-53 hey, is the score. And there's Matt Doherty. Jim, Matt Doherty, who was a starter. Actually, in that game in 1982, Matt Doherty played more minutes than anybody for North Carolina, 39 minutes. He only scored four points in the game, and he missed the front end of a one-on-one -on -one that allowed Sleepy Floyd to hit that jumper that put Georgetown ahead. But he said a great thing happened to him when he went to the timeout situation. Dean Smith hit him on the back and said, Matt, if you're open, bury it. A little extra confidence. So after a foul on Kansas and a basket, they call it against North Carolina. Five-second call, and that's that great defensive footwork by Hancock. He showed us in the first half he was a key. and picks right up where he left off. Williams and Reese in for North Carolina. The report from the bench is that it's a bruised left hip for Phelps. Sullivan will take a seat next to him. And <laughs> bumped him a little bit. He said, ouch, Pat. But we expect he'll return. That's what they're telling us. Now, against the likes of Cincinnati and Arkansas, that would have been a huge loss for North Carolina. Kansas has not pressed. Williams pulls up for the three. Oh, and Scott just tried to snap that rebound and bounced it out of bounds. You know, Jim, you were looking right at his eyes there, and you noticed how he looked to make the pass before he made the catch. Carolina running their out-of-bounds sequence. Sooner or later, they're going to look for that lob to Montross on that out-of-bounds play, but maybe not with Ostertag in there. Great drive. Reese, too strong. Ostertag. Three on Montross, and that was... Now, he has been punched in the face, flipped to the floor, and there he gets a foul finally called, and it's really a touch foul. Watch this right here. A touch. And I got to tell you, up a third. his second one I thought was pretty much a touch foul too. Oh in the yeah, first half. yeah, exactly. But that's Ostertag's job: take up that space inside and put Montross in foul trouble. Phelps back. Although the look on his face looked like he's not still feeling all that much better. There's Hancock on the back. That was a brilliant rebound by Reese because he was up against a high leaping Hancock. Breaking the action under 12 minutes to play. That was 10 years ago tomorrow, the magical moment for Jim Valvano and Jimmy V back home watching this. We wish you well. There was a big gathering last night at dinner. 1,000 people showed up in Coach Valvano's honor. And the words around here, don't give up, Jimmy. Don't ever give up. A lot of people thinking of you down here at the Final Four. Jim, it's really interesting. When you think of what John Thompson was talking about at halftime in his interview, about the fact that it seems like North Carolina is throwing all these heavyweight punches, but this Kansas club just doesn't go away. And you look up at the scoreboard and you think, hey, North Carolina's in a comfortable position, but they're not. Up three, chance on the line here for Williams, but Kansas will not go away. That they was played the, a very solid defensive game. One and one. We'll shoot another one. That was the second, by the way, on Walters. The seventh, thus the one and one situation. And Roy Williams, who says he gets way too much credit for the Kansas success, but he really has done a remarkable job. He says it doesn't say Williams on the jersey. It says Kansas. Interesting. Both he and Dean Smith took over programs on NCAA probation. And look at what they did in regard to the turnarounds. Dean Smith goes way back in 1961-62 season. Laying off Hancock, but you can't lay off this man. You know, Phelps is not moving very well, is he? No, I, I tell you, if Carolina makes it through this game, you'll have to wonder how that uh, injury will be tomorrow when he wakes up, getting ready for Monday if they win. I'm I think Jordan should take him on it. There he is taking him on the dribble. I think that he needs a little bit more room to take him. You can see, yep. he's really hurting. Dean Smith's going to have to take him out of there. He is really hurting. 
Montross. What a shot! What? And he goes down. He, oh no, that. Yeah, he goes down again. I, I think that Dean Smith's going to have to take him out of the game, Jim. No, for he, two well, reasons. Number one, he's got a lead in this game. No sense hurting that. And of course, if they could get through this one, you want to get him as healthy as possible. He's coming out. Everything's happening tough for this young man. Elbow injury. Had a knee injury, of course, two years ago. He goes down. He's coming out right now. So they bring in Scott Cherry. A senior who's given them some solid minutes. Simons. Cherry goes on Walters. Play the way what? Belch looked, I would be surprised if he returned today. Let's remember it was 60-53 when he went out. Hancock misses the short one. Montross almost picked up his fourth cheap foul. Paulie had excellent position on him. Montross pushed him a little bit from behind, got away with it. Here's the press again. And with Phelps out of the game, who's going to be the primary ball handler? Basically, the five-man team. Ah. Stolen by Jordan. And that's one place where you miss Phelps already. That's what I said. Who's going to be the primary ball handler? And the answer was that that time, Brian Reese got matched up against a guard that played much lower. North Carolina oh, loses just... composure right here. Jim Dean Smith talks about the great fall gown. He said one time he showed us a film of the mongoose and showed how the mongoose reacted when it fought the cobra. And it was so effective because it stayed low. There was an example in basketball of the mongoose. He got lower than the cobra and took it away. So that old Fog Allen film certainly paid off, but for the wrong team there as far as Dean Smith was concerned. Another example, Billy, where they went up to a seven-point lead. Now Kansas can cut it to two right here. Walters missing the three. Salvadori got a piece of Walters' hand that time and threw the shot off. Williams pull up three. Big basket for North Carolina. And you know what? Dean Smith is coming back with Phelps. And blocked at the other end. Salvadori has it stripped, though. Richie right back up with it. Look at Scott Cherry with a big play off the bench. That's a tough break for Kansas right there because they had an opportunity to finish one off. Turned over. North Carolina a little bit impatient here with 9-10 to go. Phelps is back, Billy. Yep. That surprises me. Yeah, and, and you know, of course, I've seen him play for his entire career, including high school, and he is a guy that shows a lot of pain. I mean, whether, and I'm not saying he's faking in any way at all, but he'll let you know when he's hurting a little bit. Sullivan also back. As, a, as opposed to, let's say, a George Lynch, who I think you'd probably have to tear him apart before he ever wins. George Lynch has never missed a game in his career. Right. Phelps is actually moving a little better now than when he came out before. Nice switch by George Lynch. He does so many little things in a game that help you win. The fact that Woodbury can't get untracked offensively. Shot clock at 12. Spreading things out. Good matchup there. Rayford bounces it into Pauly. Air ball, but Scott is in the right place. And, and since the ball did not hit anything, the ball did not hit anything. So that was a proper call by the official. It must hit the rim. Of course, we can go back to the great Mi Michigan UCLA situation. Watch this. It hits nothing. So consequently, it may have taken away a break opportunity, though, because by Salvador side. had it, not Kansas, and North Carolina was ready to run. A big possession for North Carolina with an opportunity to put it into double figures. Not a good pass. Good pass by Montreux. Oh. Yeah. And this time he's over the back for number four. Jim, I, I really think that North Carolina is in a position right now. They had the cherry pass on the inside, and that time the, the pass on the inside by Rodel being too impatient. 
They have not made Kansas work on the defensive end of the floor, and we talked about that at the top of the show. Both of these teams would like to have the ball in their possession more than their opponent. Montross stays in with four fouls. Eight minutes to go. And they stay man-to-man -man with him having four fouls. Pauley positioning. Montross behind him, now Frunson. Dean Smith may have to be thinking either zone or Matt Wenstrom for a couple of minutes because Salvadori has played a lot of minutes. He's a little tired. Jordan, okay. Phelps. He responds with a drive to the basket. I mean, he's not going to take the perimeter shot. There's the trap on Woodbury. Read by Sullivan and the save. And there was a case where North Carolina, it looked like everything was open on the inside. Sullivan really hustling from the weak side makes the interception. Watch the That's save the defense. as we go to break. North Carolina by seven, a little more than seven minutes remaining. Well, Montross, 20 points to lead North Carolina, but he has four fouls. He is not on the floor as action continues. Salvadori is the seven-footer for North Carolina at the moment. And Jim, you saw there Kansas shooting under 50%, which is one of their marks that you always look for. They are 19 and 0 when they shoot over 50. But they're under it right now. Only shot 38% as a team in the Big 8 tournament was really off stride for a Roy Williams coach team. Here's a little bit more patience by North Carolina with the lead, making Kansas work a little bit. And that man right there, George Lynch, a big first half, Jim, but there's been silence so far in the second. Salvadori threw it up. And Lynch has not made a shot from the floor in the second half. After five from the floor in the first. And what a big three by Jordan. That brings Kansas 65-61. Richard Scott doing a good job on Lynch. Matches up nicely with him with his strength. And right now, North Carolina has to go to a go-to guy, and I think Lynch is the answer. Richard Scott a little too close, and he gets hit with his fourth. That could be big because he is the matchup man for George Lynch. A little talking back and forth between the two. Two excellent competitors. George Lynch, 32 career double-doubles. And of course, he played that last one Cincinnati, 21 points, 14 rebounds. We saw Montross, first team all ACC. George Lynch, first team all C ACC. And Bobby Hurley this year. Billy, that's first, something significant. Right, right. First time that Bobby Hurley ever made the first team all conference in his career. That's hard so, to believe, isn't yeah, it? it uh, of course, it's hard not to get used to seeing him in the, in the final four. You know, the all time assist leader. Rodel for Williams for North Carolina. Six minutes remaining, six point difference. North Carolina, pretty big team out there overall. And here's Pauley from outside. Yes, oh, yes. Salvadori, strong rebound. Kansas missed an opportunity on the cross court pass to Jordan, who was wide open for another three. They need to be looking for that. North Carolina getting a little bit more spacing on offense now, you notice? Tough pass, got it over there. And Salvadori couldn't handle that hot one. That's the difference between Salvadori, who does not take up space, and Montross that does. You gotta know who you're passing to. The Jordan yep. oh. right by the injured Phelps, and Salvadori with another defensive rebound. Phelps is running Jim at about a fourth of his normal ability. What makes him such a great defender is the way he moves his feet, and he can't do it now. They may be able to clear out for Jordan. Phelps, so here he is. Oh, this is in the layup. It gets banged inside. On the floor again, but he is back up. That's a big miss, Jim. 
Kansas cannot afford too many empty trips, and that's an easy one to Richie. And you know why that happened? Because Phelps could not get down court. Rodel was going to go over to pick up his man, and that left Richie wide open inside. Timeout called by North Carolina. Phelps limps to the bench. Timeout, Carolina. Jim, you talk about all kinds of stats. Here is one that'll come out and jump at you. Kansas is 28-0 when they're ahead at the five-minute mark. They are 0-5 when they are behind. We are now at 429. And they trail. And Scott Cherry is in for Phelps. Kansas picking up the pressure outside. That means Oster Tag's going to be one-on-one -on -one with Montross inside. There oh, it is. Good oh. pass, and Oster Tag says, wait a minute. That was a clean block. Yeah, he stayed right there. He's a strong young man. There was the case. They were playing such tough pressure on the ball that you knew sooner or later Montross would get an opportunity to be one-on-one -on -one with Oster Tag inside. He got all ball, but he's such a big body that he hit with the rest. It's that beautiful smile of his, huh? <laughs> Third on Oster Tag. Remember, Montross has returned with four. You know how he lost those teeth, Jim? Fell out of a gut, had some dizzy spells. He fell out of a car, hit the side of a the sidewalk. I heard it was on a water slot. Now, how would about a seven foot, three inch guy coming down a water Boy, slot? I don't know. We gotta check that one out. I heard he was a bit dizzy a few years back and just fainted falling out of a car. He was dizzy when those teeth came out. <laughs> He was seeing double vision, no less. That's why you got double zeros out there. There you go. Good movement and good defense by North Carolina. And without Walters out there, they're looking to extend and get somebody to shoot a three. Richie misses. Oster tag follows. This score right now, 68-63, is the exact final in North Carolina's semifinal victory here 11 years ago. Nice move, but a great block by Oster tag. And now he gets hit in the face. And a break at the other end, taken away by North Carolina. Oster tag still down. The referees didn't see it, and he's seeing some stars now, Jim. See if he can get up here. See if we can see the play. That, there it was. It was just the inadvertent elbow that caught him right in the head. This is a good move by Montross and a great defensive reaction by Ostertag. I thought he made a foul on the play, and then he got hit with that elbow right in the face. Well, if he hadn't have lost his teeth some time back, he would have lost them today off of that one. There's Jim Ostertag, his father, looking on. And in the blue cap right behind Pete Gillen. Great job again at Xavier. One of the real bright young coaches in the business. By the way, that was a huge missed opportunity at the other end off of the block. Chance for Kansas to move within three. 320 remaining. Anytime Kansas plays so tight on the ball, it opens up things one-on-one -on -one down low. Lynch looking for a back screen. And here's the patience that North Carolina did not show, Jim, when they had a chance to get that double-digit type lead. Under 10 on the shot clock. Nothing and there. And taken away by Kansas. Hancock, will he wait for his teammates? Yes. Oh, a push-off on Lynch. Wow, George Lynch right going right after Eric Matras, who pushes him away. Still in his face. Yeah, I mean, we're talking about some woofing, but not with the opponent. And you can see George Lynch going right at. There's that senior leadership. And now Matras goes over and talks to him. A little bit more civil manner. Hancock at the line for Kansas' first, first free throws of this half. Oster tag, dizzied for a moment, right back in now for for Pauly, and Reese is in for North Carolina. So Hancock only 65% on the season. He'll shoot a one and one. I said no attempts from the line in this half, only five for the whole game. Jimmy talked about his injury. He is not wearing the goggles. Which kind of surprises me a little bit. That's the first that I've noticed. Uh, you know, this first game, I've noticed that he has not worn them the entire game. 
Roy, Roy told me he'd taken them off twice during games in the late season, and he said, if you're going to not wear them, you're going to sit down next to me. That's what he told yeah, me I, yesterday. That's what I'm he's in about. there anyway. Yep. Rex Walters comes in, Hancock with two big ones. And in fact, there he goes. He'll yep. sit him down for Hancock. Well, I think that that substitution, though, was, was pre-planned. Yeah, pre yeah. I don't think that was a disciplinary move in any shape or form. Here comes the trapping. North Carolina goes over the top. Williams firing quickly. Oh, Huge three. shot. It puts him up six. Huge shot. Roy Williams gambled and it backfired. 230 remaining. Woodbury in a jam. Walters slipped and threw it away to Williams. Kansas has had a couple of incidents where they slipped in that area, Jim. Remember? Before it was Jordan that went down. And North Carolina used a little clock here. Lest they get something nice and easy. Rayford doing a good job cutting the pass off to Phelps because he knows he wants to be the primary ball handler. 20 on the shot clock. Lynch, the senior, wisely comes out and becomes a ball handler. Now steal. Kansas needed that. Under two minutes to play, trailing by six. Walters the turned it over. Defense on the crossover dribble by Williams, who just happened to have his hand in the right place at the right time. Timeout called by Roy Williams. Walters turned it over two straight trips. Jayhawks with a timeout. 103 seconds remain at the Superdome in the national semifinal game one. Jim Nance and Billy Packer. Carolina has possession and the six-point lead. Good reverse dribble that time by Phelps. He anticipated the double team that was going to come to meet him at center court, and that reverse dribble took away the double team completely. Foul on the outside. Now, we talked about senior leadership earlier, where Lynch was scolding a bit. Uh, Montross. Well, here's where it continues. Jim, no, right here. I'm is talking the, about yeah, the leadership. It, right, the, exactly. Great senior, senior, senior leadership right here by George Lynch and Eric Montross. He took over, told Montross he wasn't in the right place at the right time before, and there he pulls the guy back under his wing. Nice job. Two for Williams. The double bonus the rest of the way. Yeah. Williams, an 81% free throw shooter, 40% from three. Woodbury has four fouls, has not had his normal excellent game, usual excellent game. Now Dean Smith starting to say, I'm going to give you a defensive team and an offensive team. Williams goes out, Rodel in. That'll be Rodel on Walters. Phelps got the job to stay here with Jordan because Jordan and Walters got to be the offense now for Kansas. Walters. Tough shot. <laughs> Lynch. What a rebounder. And as you said, only Sam Perkins has more rebounds in his career than, than Lynch. He passed Billy Cunningham to move into second at the East Regionals. The first great player that Dean Smith coached at North Carolina, Billy the kangaroo kid, they call him at University of North Carolina. There's Montross. Now a Hall of Famer. And you see Dean Smith comes back, uh, Jim, with Williams so that he can have his offensive production on the floor. And you know, I think that uh, Derek Phelps has run out of his injury. You know, sometimes that happens. You sit over on the bench, it gets cool. And, and for three. Trying to sort out exactly who just checked in I back with the official score. The other thing I think they'll check in is Hancock's shirt. It's hanging out over his pants. Um, well, no adjustment. Well, no adjustment. The referee doesn't say much. I think you're right, Billy, though, about Phelps. He was grimacing so much earlier. Yeah. He was See, surprised he's he was still in the game. Yeah, he's running a lot better now that he's, he's kind of running off before sitting on that bench and cooled down on him and looked like he's really having problems. Dangerous pass cross court at midcourt. Want to go inside and over. Under 50 seconds. Yeah. And Scott knocks Montross to the floor. Now Richard Scott did the right thing. I mean, he had to go out and attack. 
And here you go again. Dean Smith will send in three substitutes to play on the defensive end of the floor, knowing Roy Williams will try to stop the clock. Richard Scott has fouled out with eight points. And Jim, when you look at it, what offset the basic game here today? Walters and Jordan did their job. Scott and Woodbury did not offensively. On the North Carolina side, where they're in the lead, Montross and Lynch did what they're supposed to do, and Williams came up big. So, you know, that was the deciding factor, at least up to this point. Only 44 seconds remain. North Carolina leads by eight. Two free throws for Eric Montross. Roy Williams did a smart thing there as a coach. He got attention of his players and said, box out. You know how critical it would be to lose a, a missed foul shot here. A 10 point lead for the second time tonight. Salvador in for Montross. And Jim, what you have to be thinking right now is to surround the defense, Woodbury, Jordan, and Walters, and take some quick threes. Blocked by Salvador beautifully. Jim, that wouldn't get it done. You've got to get threes, a drive inside and kick out maybe, but not go for the layup. Phelps, now he. Looks as though there's a little pain to wrestle with, but he'll head to the free throw line, and North Carolina will head to Monday night. Michigan, Kentucky coming up next. A pair of one seeds to well, duel. You know, Jim, we thought this game would be somewhat of a finesse game, but this has been a bruiser. No telling what we'll see in the next one in terms of bodies going after each other. Young man right there, Darren Hancock had a great first half defensively. Roy Williams studying a longtime assistant of Dean Smith. Kind of interesting he got to Kansas of course on Smith's recommendation to oh! as did Larry Larry Brown another one of Dean Smith's former a former player who coached so well at Kansas took him to two final fours and won championship. Timeout calls as Walters I'm out called, I should say. Eight point di differential. 19 seconds remaining. Timeout, Kansas. Kansas has only one timeout remaining. They trail by eight with 19 seconds to go. Carolina basketball. Jim Kansas not guarding the passer out of bounds. Hancock back here as a safety man. The key for North Carolina just get it in bounds as they do. No foul. Third ball. <laughs> this will be Dean Smith's fourth opportunity, Jim, to a championship game. He lost in 77 after that great game, the prototype of what we see in the 90s when Jerry Tarkanian had that great Vegas team. But then he lost to Al McGuire's club at Marquette in 81. They beat Virginia in the opening round and then lost to Bob Knight's team at Indiana. And then, of course, 82, we talked about his national championship year. So this will be year number four. His first three times coming to the Final Four, he lost in that opening round to Dayton in 67, UCLA in 68, and then Purdue in 69. Paulie and Matt Winstrom in for the first time. More subs for North Carolina. They'll get into the record book. Larry Davis, Travis Stevenson. Ed Geff. And Jim, on a light note, this is the crowd that played against Rhode Island with about 10 minutes to go. And we talked about that tough decision that day Dean Smith had as to how do I keep those kids on the court that long? They're used to only playing a matter of a minute or two at a time. And say so long, college fans, to Adonis Jordan. Great Williams' work. first recruit at Kansas. Three-year starter. Two final fours. Three big eight championships, and they hadn't done that since back in the days of 52, 53, 54. So that young man signed when Kansas was in the midst of all their problems. And like the Kentucky players that Rick Pitino brought along from last year's team that stuck it out, he got a chance to see some uh, great years for himself and his team. Now Stevenson comes in. 
for Williams. Williams goes out with a game high 25 for North Carolina. A 10 point victory. North Carolina is in the championship game. And for the first time ever, two number one seeds will clash for the championship on Monday night. We're assured of that. When we come back, we'll join Pat O'Brien, plus we'll hear from the victorious North Carolina Tar, Tar Heels, who will play for the championship Monday.